next we are on page 2-9. All right, so T squares firm against the side of the table. And I got, I'm on the visible line section. What I'm going to do is move my paper until I get both of those lines lined up, those little stubby lines lined up. And visible lines are dark and fairly heavy. When I say heavy, that's line weight. Okay, so they're fairly dark, not too thick about like this you'll get the feel for it right notice it's pretty close to the given one right it's a bad copy job i know but it's pretty close to this thickness on this one here okay what you're going to do on this assignment is do two more of those right next to each other and then you're on hidden lines okay so for hidden lines hidden lines are a little thinner and as you notice they're dashed right so when you do a good hidden line, they're very uniform. So what I'm gonna do, much like the lettering thing we did earlier, is match up with the given one and try to keep them all consistent. So I'm gonna match up with the given one and I'm not gonna draw too thick now. These ones are a little lighter and I'm making these dashes just as long as the other ones right above it pretty close anyways drafting is just all about consistency just like that and I was a little crooked there. That's all right, I'm not taking this class for credit. That's my joke, sorry. All right, next one I'll do better, but you get the point, right? Your next one is gonna match up with this one perfectly, right? Each dash here will be just directly under this one, and that dash will be directly under that one. Moving down, section line. Now a section line is a solid line once again. It's not broken. This is a solid line, this is a broken line or dash line. Section line is a solid line, but it's thinner than a visible line. It's the same thickness as a hidden line. So what we're gonna do now is join these two stubby lines together with a thin, solid line. Now when I say thin, I don't mean light, I just mean thin as far as size, okay? So then you'll do just like this one. You'll do two more. Do two more there. Center lines. Center lines are kind of like Morse code. They're they're long dash, short dash, long dash, short dash, long dash, short dash. And they're uniform also. And they are thin lines. Not light lines, they're thin lines. So there's a short dash. Long dash, short dash. Let me move up a little bit. There we go. Long dash, short dash, long. Long dash. Okay, something like that. Dimension line. Dimension lines, they're thin lines. Also, you got a little arrow on the end there. Now, when you start writing these three and a halfs in here, it's all gonna bunch up together, so I'm not gonna have you write the numbers tonight. Okay, we'll do that when we do our drawings. It won't take that much long to learn, but you do need to leave a little break in the middle for your, your your dimension to fit in there. So in this case, it's three and a half inches. 
The mention lines have a little arrow on the end there. So carefully on this assignment, we will sketch that arrow in. You will learn how to do a proper arrow later. That's in unit uh, seven, I want to say. A month from now, maybe. Okay. So the dimension line, leave a little break, match up with this break. I do want you to notice though that this three is centered with the line. That's your whole number. And your fraction line, the little slash, is lined up perfectly with the, the dimension line. And your uh, one and your two are each one eighth of an inch tall. This is an eighth tall, that's an eighth tall, that's an eighth tall. The whole thing isn't an eighth tall, each one is an eighth tall. So this actually ends up being just bigger than a quarter inch because we've got some space right here. So when you draw dimension lines on your drawings, remember, center your whole number. Your fraction gets centered right on the line there, and each one's an eighth tall, okay? Cutting plane line. Just like a dimension line, a cutting plane line is a thin line. And it's got a double dash, right? So we're going to match this up once again and go double dash, long dash, 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 long dash, dash. You know, I just crooked all over the place tonight. I don't know what my problem is. Maybe I'm just so happy my YouTube works. Probably what it is. Yeah. Did somebody have a question? Oh, you can't see it. Sorry. My bad. Technology issues here. Sorry. Okay. You're cutting plane line. Short dash. Double dash. Long dash. Double dash. Long dash. Double dash, just like that. They can see you, Brian. <laughs> no, you're good. I have a, uh, a friend here tonight, uh, another teacher from uh, East High. He's uh, watching how I do this screen share thing. They see both screens, though? I see. Not that one. No, they see your little pic right there. Well, yeah. I know. So, <laughs> so these two on one screen, that's pretty hard to see, though. Yeah. On their Chromebook. I mean, this is the half the size. Well, they see, they see the video. But, yeah. All right, so on the other side, guys, you're going to just do the same thing on this side here. You're just going to do the same thing again. I'm not going to go through all these lines. It's pretty self-explanatory what you need to do. Okay, so that's 2-9. 210. Two ten is pretty basic. And if you look right here, it tells you exactly what you need to do. Here's your board, right? Here's your T-square. Firmly planted against the side of the board. Make sure the top and the bottom of this black part are both touching. What you're going to do is line up with this first stub line here. And you're going to make sure your line's parallel with the one they gave you. Once you get your paper where you want it for the first line, if your T-square is square with the board, you'll be fine. So my first line. Don't worry too much about thickness. You're just getting the hang of the tool. So move your T-square down the board without moving the paper. When you do drawings, everything will be taped down. But for this, it's just tool practice. Okay, so you just move straight down. And you're going to do five lines. Okay. Pretty straightforward on that one, right? Next one. When you want to make vertical lines in drafting, you don't just take the T-squared and move it to the top of your table like that. For one, that's not very productive. Okay, two, 
That's not the way you do it, because you've got to use a triangle also. And on this example here, it shows the 30, 60, 90 triangle. You can just tell by the way it looks. Okay. To do a straight vertical line, you can use any triangle because both triangles have vertical edges to them. Okay. Just for the sake of simplicity, I am going to mimic exactly what they're doing. Okay, so you move your T-score down a little bit. And you set your triangle right on top of the T-square like this. So now you got two variables. You got to make sure your T-square is square with the side of the table. So pull it firmly against the table. And you got to make sure while you're holding your T-square that this is firm on top of the T-square. Because the idea is you slide your triangle down the line when you make these little lines here, okay? So first one I'm going to do, my T-square square, my triangle square, vertical lines. Notice I'm moving my triangle down the T-square like that, okay? Just like that. Okay? I'm not going to do any more of those, but you will fill all the rest of those in. Now this one says to draw 45 degree lines in the spaces shown. Match the given lines in width. What that means is you're just making them the same distance apart and they gave you all the little dashes to start with. So now I'm gonna get my 45 degree triangle, which is this one. So I'm gonna square off my T-square. And a good thing to do is to line up your T-square with this, this uh, borderline, this, this box right here. There's a box right here, so I'm lining up with the box, this line right here. I'm just going to line up with that because that's pretty square. For the sake of this exercise, it's good enough. Okay, so then I'm going to make my line up with my dash, make a line. Line up with my dash, make a line. Yep. Make a line. Okay, simple. All the way down. This one here, I'm not even going to demonstrate, but you will do this one. You're just going to go the other way now. Okay, so you turn your triangle around that way. All the way down that way. Don't forget these guys right here. There's three there. So you'll make those three all the way. And you can start on this side if you want. Doesn't matter. All the way across. All right, so that's page 210. 2-11. Essentially, you're doing the same thing. Now you're just using this triangle. 30, 60, 90 triangle. Let's square up. Let's square. That box there, you can use any one. It doesn't matter because your triangle is probably big enough. Now let's use some that. Square it up as close as possible. I will show you how to square your paper up perfectly when we do our first drawings. That's in unit three. Okay. So you line up, make sure you're, you're square with that first line there. See it? It's pretty straight. And then you just, you're doing the same thing with just the other triangle. I would suggest tearing your pages out of the book because this fold right here is going to get in your way and you might mess up. So you can tear them out as long as you don't lose them. Use a paper clip or something. And uh, you know, you're going to take pictures of them and send them to me. There is still some people taking pictures and they're not coming in at the right file format. It's got to be PDF. Uh, Mr. Espinoza, I think you're one of them. You're sending me stuff that I can't read. So just go all the way down like that. We can talk after class if you have questions on that, okay? Just like that. And then the next one tells you to do the same thing, but go the other way. I don't really need to go over that. Same thing, just backward. This one? 60 degrees. Okay, so I'm going to square up. I'm 
Now I got my triangle pointing up. And if you're ever unsure, look, it tells you draws a picture of it for you right there. There. Line. 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 Okay. All the way down. Same thing here. Same thing. Opposite direction. Easy peasy. All right, these are a little trickier. Okay, so you're using all three things now. You're using your T square and your both triangles. This is how you get these weird angles. You're you're doing a combination triangle to get those weird angles. So you'll need some room to do this. So I usually go down to like three down there, like that. And I'm gonna do the same thing they got on this picture. So I need my 30, 60, 90 triangle on the bottom, like it shows there. And then I need my 45 triangle on the top, like it shows here. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna match up with that line there. And it's pretty close. So now what I do is I'm going to move the whole unit. T square obviously stays put, but the whole triangle assembly is going to go to my right. Okay. So as I pull it over, I can now do that one. Oops. Just like that. So that's a 15 degree angle. So as you see, I'm moving both triangles over to the right. Okay, just like that. And then you'll finish all those out. These on the bottom here. This one here is the same exact way, except now you're going the opposite direction. So you're just flipping it over. It has a picture of it once again. Triangle goes like that. And you're gonna go across. There's the first line. Second line. Third line. Right, all the way down. So you're all the way down, right? 75 degree. Kind of like the last one we did, just the top triangle flipped around the other direction. That's all it is. Okay, so G squared, squared. Small, or the 30, 60, 90 triangle. Now this one's gonna go straight up like that. All you gotta do, follow the picture. Draw your lines, line, line, line line, line, all the way down. Here, it's the same exact thing as this one. This 75 degrees going the other way, right? You guys know the, the 180 degrees, right? Go up to 90, and it goes all the way around. It's actually 75 degrees from the other side. Obtuse angle. Back from geometry. Two dash thirteen. Let's see. Let's skip. We will skip fourteen. Don't do 14, but we will do 13. Okay, so 13. Now these ones, if you notice, you don't have those little stubby lines anywhere, right? Because you got to draw them on your own. So right here, using the method shown on the panel, if that's the panel. 
Draw the lines parallel to the heavy line as shown. Space your lines a quarter inch apart measured along the light line. This is your light line that we're talking about. And you'll need your ruler. Like that. You're going to match it up with your line. And you're going to draw a little stubby line, your own little stubby line. There's already one there for you. You don't need to draw that line. See the line? You're going to draw little stubby lines a quarter inch apart. So one all the way down, all right? Every quarter inch. What you could do is get to your scale. Remember the quarter inch scale? Notice a quarter inch start from this side, and I already started over here, so I just got to find any quarter that's already there. And you're going to mark every quarter inch. Okay, so you run out of room. If you look closely, I put my little marks in there. Now, if you look at the way it has it in the panel, it tells you to slant your T-square and do all this weird stuff. Let me show you an easy way to do that. Normally in drafting, we never slant our T-square unless we gotta connect two lines together and we just need a big, long, straight edge that are triangles, it's not long enough to do. So normally we will never do this, but I'll show you the easy way to do this. So what you're going to do, it says you need the 45 degree triangle. So let me get that. Okay, there's 45. So what I'm going to do, I'm trying to match up with this line here. So instead of slanting T-square, I'm going to slant the paper. It doesn't really matter what you slant. You can slant your T-square if you want. I think it's easier if you do the paper. So I'm used to having my T-square square on the side of the table. And when it's not square on the side of the table, I kind of get nervous. If my T-square isn't square, I want to wonder what else is messed up on my drawing. And you'll, you'll realize that pain when we start drawing. Your whole drawing will be ruined because your T-square was off with just one little key critical measurement in part of your drawing. You'll be hating life. No, I'm just kidding. It's not that bad. Okay, so if you notice here now in parallel, right? I'm going to go down just like that without moving my T-square, without moving the paper. Move it all the way down, and you're going to draw a line on each one of those little stubby lines all the way down the paper, all the way down, just like that. Okay. This one here, the next one. Is the exact same thing, except now you're drawing lines a half inch apart. So once again, let me find my half inch scale. You can use every half inch on the ruler if you want. I just think the scale is easy because it only gives me lines in half inch. So I'm going to start from the right here from the dark line along the light line. So I'm right here, every half inch. Okay, they're there. Once again, it tells me to use the 45 with the slanted T-square. Well, I'm not going to slant my T-square. I'm going to do. I'm going to do it my way. You do it your way. Okay, I like my way. Works for me. Whatever works for you. Sometimes there's not a right or wrong way to do it. So what I'm going to do is slant my page until. Actually, I gotta go that way now. We we'll figure it out. Like this. And see, here's when that fold's getting in your way because it's my my triangle's kind of wanting to go up underneath the T-square. That's not good. But I don't want to take my pack at all apart because I use this for other classes and I'll start losing stuff. Yeah, not good. So right there, just like that. And
All right, now I'm square, right? My line's matched up with this line. So then now I can go down. If this fold wasn't here, it wouldn't be so hard, but for you, it'll be easier if you take that fold apart, okay? Just like that. Move yourself, move your triangle all the way down until you're done. Okay, this one here. So what you're gonna do, draw lines a quarter inch apart parallel to the samples shown. You're gonna draw these lines in, you're gonna fill this in. Measure along the light lines. So this is your light line right here, these guys. I know that's kind of confusing, but this is the light line. This is the light line. You take your quarter inch scale once again, like that, and you make your quarter inch marks. Might as well do this one here while you're there. You gotta start from the top one. Okay, and you're just drawing parallel lines to that other one there. So it says to slant your T-square. I like to slant my paper, so I wanna get these lines flat with me. Oh, and then I gotta use my triangle too, right? So it makes it all kind of awkward because that folds in the way again. Paper slit, one more, there we go, just like that, okay, so then I go along, pencil my lines in. Okay, do that one, this one's the same thing, it's just reversed, you just got to figure out the orientation, to get it everything paralleled up and you'll have it made. Okay, remember I said skip 